Hello guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. In this tutorial, we will talk about the update operation using the database methods. So as the name indicate, update operation is used to update an existing record. Let's say you wanted to update a field on the invoice record or update an existing field on the customer record, then we're going to go ahead and use the update operation. So what is the syntax of using the update operation through the database method? This is the syntax. It takes in two parameters record to update and the boolean value all or none and the return type it gives you a database dot save result is the return type of this method now what is the record to update is you're going to send a list of the records that you want to update or the fields of that particular record that you want to update so whichever records you want to update you will pass those records you will set the value of all or none to true or false if the value of the all or none is false, then what will happen is if a record fails, the remainder of the DML operation will still succeed. And this is going to be the result object that we can use to verify which records were succeeded, which records were failed, and what is the reason for the failure of the records. So everything else is similar. Only thing that changed is the update here, and then the output is database sort of save result. Requirement. Let's say we have a business requirement and we want to update the status field of the invoice object. But at the same time, we also wanted to in retrieve more information like status of the records or the failed records or the success count, etc. using the database update method. This is not possible by using the database DML statements. So we are going to go ahead and use the database methods to get the status of all the records which were successful, what is the success count, which are the failed record IDs, etc. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write a program where we're going to change or update the status of the invoice object and we'll try to retrieve all this extra information for the records as well. So let's go back to the developer console. And in the developer console, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and fetch the records and I wanted to update, fetch the invoice records. And I'm going to go ahead and update the status field to paid. So far, if you go ahead and take a look at your invoice records, so if I go back to my Salesforce and go to the invoices section, you will see we have four invoice records created. And uh, this particular invoice is in paid status. This next invoice is also in paid status. The third invoice is also in paid status. And the fourth invoice is in pending status. And let's go ahead and create a new invoice for test and customer and make it into pending as well. And this is $800 and hit the save button. So now we have total of five invoices and out of the five invoices, two invoices are the ones which are in the pending status. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and update the status of these two invoices to paid status. So let's go back, go to the developer console. We're going to go ahead and write our select query and we are going to go ahead and retrieve the ID, the name, the status from the and if you wanted to also, you can fetch the created date as well when those records were created from the invoice table. So you're going to go ahead and fetch all the records that are available in the invoice table. So how many records we have so far? We have about five records. And where we are going to go ahead and store all these records, we are going to go ahead and create a list of these invoice records. So we're going to go ahead and store into that particular list. Let's say the name of the list is invoice list. So this is the name of the list. And this list will have all the records from the invoice table. Now, next thing is we need to go ahead and create a list to store the records which we need to update. So we're going to go ahead and create a separate list to store the records which we need to update. So we're going to go ahead and create another list here. This is also going to be of type invoice records. And the name of the list is updated invoice list. It means these are the records which we need to update. Right now, there is no element 
available inside of this list because we have not added any element for yet. So this is going to be an empty list. Then what we are going through, we are going to go through each of the records that is available in this invoice list. So we're going to go ahead and go through each of the invoice record. So this is the enhanced forward loop that I'm using. And if the status of the invoice is pending, let's say, if the status of the invoice, so we're going to go ahead and check the status. And if the status is equals to pending, then we're going to go ahead and update the status to the paid status. So we have two records whose status is not paid. So we're going to go ahead and update the status equals to paid. And then we're going to go ahead and add that particular record in this updated list. So we're going to go ahead and add that record, invoice record. So we're only adding the elements whose, rec whose status has been updated to paid because they're on, out of those four, five records that we have, the two of the records are in pending status. So those two records will get added into this updated invoice list. And now what we're going to do next is, now we're going to go ahead and call the database update method. So we're going to go ahead and say database dot of update. This is the method I'm going to call. It takes in two parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in the list that I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to update. So this is the list. And then the other parameter, I'm going to go ahead and set it to false. Means it will allow the partial update. And the output of this is going to get stored into database This is going to be the output. So this is the output from the database update method. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and iterate through each return result. So we're going to go ahead and iterate through the each result. We're going to go ahead and use the for loop here. Go through this result. And if it is successful, then we're going to go ahead and display that, okay, successfully updated a particular invoice and we're going to display the ID of that invoice. So we're going to go ahead and display this message system.debug and we can display the ID of that particular invoice and we can get the ID by using the get ID method. And if that particular result is not successful, if there is an else condition, so this condition will be executed for the failed record. So if you wanted to go ahead and display all the error messages, you can go ahead and go through the error messages by database. There's the errors method available. And now you can display the error. This is the error that has occurred. If you want to display the message, you can display it and you can display the status code as well. So you can see the status code. If you want to display the display would be the method is get status code. This is going to display the error status code. If you want to display the fields that are that cause that resulted into the error, we can also display those fields by using the. So far, I don't think so. There's going to be any error because it'll be the records will be successfully will get updated. So probably the else block will not going to get run, but it will give you a list of I, the IDs which were successfully we have updated the invoices. So it'll display all the IDs and I don't think so the else block will run. So let's go ahead and still test it. So right now, if you go back to your invoices, you have these two invoices, which are in the pending status, the 11 and 13. So this is in the pending status and the next one, 13 is also in the pending status and the rest of them are already in the paid status. So let's go ahead and execute this program. And you remember this is in the false, the, the parameter is set to false. So the partial update is allowed. So execute the program, go to the debug only, 
So we'll see that both there were two invoices that we need to update because both of them were in the pending status and it gave you the ID of those invoices. It did not run the else block. You can see here the status has been updated to paid for this one as well as for the 11th. So this is the update operation. The other operations that we have, delete, undelete, etc., are very similar to the one we have done for the DML. So I'm not going to spend more time discussing the same thing. You can, I will add it as an assignment for you guys to go ahead and do an example of the database delete and undelete operation. And in the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about the query languages. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you so much.